Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. We're in session. Mr. Turner. By your heads, please. You have the honors. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the opportunity to come together as community in this fine county. We ask for discernment and wisdom as we make these decisions affecting the county. Amen. Amen. Would you please rise? My pleasure. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need a motion for the so moved. approval of the agenda. Second. And motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, public comments. Gee, I hate that. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Bad joke. Um, we are now going into a closed session. If our attorney will. This ugly is going to handle the reading of the motion. Yes, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143 318 a 3 I ask the board move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the, the public body. The attorney will advise the board on matters including NAACP et al, v. Alamance County et al, Alamance County file number 21 CVS 710, and Allison et al, v. Allen et al, U.S. Middle District file number 19 CV 1126. The regular meeting will resume after closed session. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. I would like to indicate the reason we've moved this to the front is one of our attorneys um, has had some medical issues and needs to have it early and also is what, teaching classes at Wake Forest. Ms. Bechtel? I believe it's the, the former reason is why. All right. So that's the reason we've moved this part to the front of the agenda unlike what we normally do. We're in closed session, thank you. We're back in session. We have already closed the closed session, and so we're back in our regular meeting. Okay, we have next the consent agenda. I am gonna move with the consent agenda that we remove item 6A2, which is the Jack Committee appointments. Um, and I would ask that it be moved to after the October 31 date, um, so it would be in the first November meeting. Can Do we, I have a second? Can, second. Can I make a discussion comment? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Foster is was my nominee um, for Jack. That's a, that's a meeting that's been meeting for a long, long, long time, and Mr. Foster has a great uh, background of working with the very thing that Jack is working so hard when it comes to drugs and alcohol and addiction and crime and mental health and all that. And um, there's some really excellent people <coughs> that applied. I know the majority of all of them, but I think it's very important that we look at people who are not on every committee and are not on everything in the county and to really get some new faces on our committees because um, he has a lot of great perspective to bring to this committee. He works with every kind of addiction you can imagine. So he's in the real front of stuff. And uh, sometimes um, we don't need all the heads of state on one committee. We need 
everybody because if we all have the same mindset we will stay exactly where we are so I just um, want to say that about Mr. Foster I, I think he would be um, a great asset to that and that's all thank you I'm not asking that he be removed I know. I'm simply asking that it be set aside until the first November meeting all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. aye. Any opposed? I'm not. I'm going to oppose to just that thing. All right. Thank you. So it's uh, four one to remove that item. Uh, now, do we have a motion as to the amended consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Motion second. All of, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, um, manager's report. Good evening, commissioners. In your, in your packet, you'll find the June um, 2022 monthly fiscal report. It is just included in there for information only. And that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, um, commissioner's comments. Ms. Thompson, we'll appoint you first. If you have any. Okay, is this the comments that would be at the end? Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> oh, this meeting's getting like I rearranged my furniture. Okay. <laughs> um, I just need some clarification about the um, veteran yeah, service office on. position. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so, I'm sorry. I can't interrupt you. I just need some clarification about the veteran services office position. I know I had pushed for this in the budget, like the three forensic detectives and some other things, and we all got our stuff that we really want to see happen, and this was one of mine. I would just like to um, I, I have some concern about how this position became a consideration to be added in transportation. Um, I, I know there's no veteran service office in the state that does that. I know we had had, um, uh, was Alcovets come in here? And uh, five years ago, we all decided to vote to approve for them to getting a van that was formerly the sheriff's to do transportation of veterans to the hospital. That's their definition. They do such a good job with that. And from what I understand, they are having a difficulty. I can't speak for them, but this is what I understand. Uh, getting getting people to volunteer we see that in a lot in different areas and so now that um, a Request was made to our sheriff about getting another van because we donated a van to um, the Alco vets and then there was another um, Request to the sheriff for another van for the veteran service officers to get this van to be included in this new position that would um, be also transportation if needed and so um, I, I just have some, some concerns about that because I know there is a packed PACT Act that's in Congress now and it's waiting on the Senate, which will be approved, and it's waiting on our President Biden to sign that. And um, one of the things in this is about the burn pits. And we all know that Bo Biden, his son, was had brain cancer that was an offspring of being around those burn pits, and they're like 23 new presumptive conditions that are going to be included with respiratory-based cancers head cancer, neck cancer, respiratory cancer, gastrointestinal cancer, reproductive cancer, lymphoma cancer, lymphomatic cancer, kidney cancer, brain cancer, melanoma. I got that. I get that. It's big. It's dangerous. And granulate, can't pronounce the word cancer. So uh, that's why I'm not your doctor. And, um, and I think whenever this is approved and voted, there <coughs> will be so many new claims filed at the Veterans Service Office that this position is going to be needed to be full-time in that office all the time. And um, I took it upon myself. I don't make decisions with personnel, and I sure don't make up positions in an entity of any kind of agency in our um, county government because that's not what I do. I'm a commissioner. We hear the results. We hear the situations they need, what they would like to have in a position. They come here in an open meeting, discuss this, and then we vote. And majority, whatever that is, <coughs> wins. Three, two, four, one, five, zero. So um, I had spoken, I was at the Senior Services, Senior Aging Committee, 
And the lady that um, represents ACTA on this was, was talking about veterans and she, she said we need to really make sure our veterans get transportation no matter what because sometimes a, a volunteer situation just can't do it because we're all human. And um, she was telling me that Davidson County um, has their veterans one day a week, I think on a Thursday maybe, that their version of ACTA um, works with that. That's part of their budget. And I, and I just asked him, I said, well, could you just find some information about that? I said, I'd love to have you to appear on the meeting. I want him on this agenda to discuss this, to see what he thought. Because these guys are transportation. That's their thing. That's what they do. Their drivers are vetted. Um, they're experienced drivers. They have cameras on the vehicles for safety. They have every kind of setup for a disabled veteran, whatever that condition looks like. Because the thought of having a transfer them to the next site to get on another van to go, these, these guys and girls just forget it. I, I would be the same way. Um, so um, I really want to make sure that this additional thing, because it got back, I met with I met with this, not with Mr. Murphy, but I talked with Heidi to talk to her about it as well. And Mr. Murphy said that they would be able to do this every Thursday. People will have to get their um, appointments all on the same day, and this would not cost the county anything, taxes, it wouldn't raise their budget, they could do this. And I think it's something that we really, really need to think about because um, our veterans, y'all know where I stand with them. I went to see Top Gun for the fifth time yesterday, I'm just saying. I'm just amazed at Craig Turner, I just can't get over you. And so anyway, um, I just think with this new PAC law that's in Congress, and Congress better get their mess together because they're dropping the ball on so many other things. They love to do press conferences, don't they? And, um, and I just think it's very important that we look at this because the last thing I want is for an Alamance County veteran to have to wait and wait and wait because we went through a, a certain time before the last administration where veterans were dying in the waiting area. They were dying on site at some of these veterans hospitals that we're just not functioning the way they're supposed to be. And there is absolutely no excuse for anybody to do that, especially our veterans. So I need to know what this is going to be because, um, I, I, you know, we always hear things. And I don't, I don't go by what I hear. I'm going to hear it out of the mouth of the, of the person. And I need to know if ACTA is going to take on this responsibility and the Veterans Service Office is going to do the responsibility of this position that we had put in the budget because not one VSO in the state of North Carolina does transportation. And, and if that's what it's meant to do, then I get that. But if we've got the professionals willing to take on this, and it may be one veteran a week, it may be 20 veteran a week. We don't know that until we open the door for this. But I think this is the least of what we can do for our service members that have come home, especially with all of these injuries that they didn't have until they went into the service when they swore before God and everybody else to take it upon their self, to risk their life for all of us to sit here and not have to worry about some things other countries are going through. So I just, I just need to know what, what the deal is, I just, so I can understand what the deal is. Because, you know, I did not run for this office to be a major pain in the butt, but I don't mind being that when it comes to something this important. Because um, I, I just think we need <coughs> this out and what we're going to do we're going to stand by it because um when we gave this van to alcovets we were 5-0 god bless them they do some really serious good work but that is helping a nonprofit. and when we went through something not too long ago with an adult daycare many of you said in the open meeting i do not feel it is my role as commissioner to help nonprofits," and i get that too we all have our own positions about things and so I want to know what the deal is. I want to know if the van that we graciously gave to Alco Vets, which I don't have any doubts about, if they're using it to transport vets or are they unable to because of, um, and I don't even want to bring them up because they're veterans and I respect them and I support them. But I just need some clarity because um, when you hear from 10 different people, you're going to hear 10 different stories. And I, I just, I just want to know what the deal is so I can accept what the deal is. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Mr. Lashley. Well, <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. Uh, it makes sense. Um, but I guess, I guess my question is, uh, why is VSO, why, why wouldn't they want to 
I mean, I've heard this so many times about uh, transporting vets to the VA. Mm -hmm. And I thought that veteran service office was that place to go. I guess my question would be how many veterans are, how many veterans are we currently serving in the VSO? That would uh, be a question for Ms. Crawford. And is it, is it more than 10? Is it less than 50? Is it? Serving in what capacity? Um, However, I'm going to stop that. I think uh, we've been told by our county attorney and several other advocates we should not be pulling in information okay. during the county commissioner's comment period. All right. Um, I, I can, I can, now, I can. I'll lean back to it, uh, leave that up to our legal counsel, but is that correct? Uh, yes, I mean, that's for, okay. that's, yeah, for another time. Right. Is that the due rules that we just recently changed? or is Because I don't think it's been this way since I was sworn in. Well, the, I'm just asking. The public, um, the rule, are you talking about the public comment policy? Is that what you're referring what to? What I'm talking about is we've got rules? RV people that stand up and talk, and we've, I mean, everybody, we've always been real open to the public because that's what we do is we serve the public. Well, I'm just, res I'm responding to what the chairman was asking, which is okay. that, you know, it is, it is correct that it's, uh, there's a public comment period for that, and um, in general it's recommended not to just I can understand. take free questions. And I, I can take a step back, uh, or just maybe just, uh, uh, I'll maybe just have to have this, this, this statement. I agree with what you're saying. I guess the only thing I'm trying to figure out is why wouldn't VSO since they have a vehicle to get the v, uh, the vet to the, the place that they need to go, whether it's at the VA or if it's whether it's their doctor's office, if the person's a full time has a, has a full time position at the VSO, why wouldn't they want to you know, facilitate that person wherever they have to go? And if it's a full time position, that's their make it happen. Right. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I guess the um, what what I would probably like I said, if this goes back, I need to know a little bit more information. Um, and, and right now, I'm a little bit hand tied by asking that question. Um, so I understand what you're saying. And uh, I just was thinking that the, the position would want to, in, in my head, get the job done, whether yeah. it's whether it's taking somebody or whether it's working inside the office, just, just make it happen. Um, so I'm with you there. Well, I think the issue I have is, um, a call was made to our sheriff. Okay, to we're, go, we're going sideways again, guys. John? We agreed to a procedure to allow a county commissioner to complete his comments and then go to the next county commissioner. I don't mind coming back to you. Okay, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Turner. I, I guess it was my understanding that staff was going to look into this uh, and, and determine what, how many veterans we needed to serve, yes. how many we had the capacity to serve, what ACT Act was available to do, yes. what uh, other nonprofits were able to do. I would just encourage Thank us to, to get to the bottom of that and come back at the next meeting with, with some, some information. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Well, that's the first I'd say, I, at the time we took the vote on that, the, I think the van kind of came in late into the picture. We were looking at making sure we had another person because we need more staff in veteran services. Personally, and I think from some conversations with some of the rest of y'all, I thought the van was an extra benefit that you had that you could use if you needed. Mm -hmm. Now, I also know that you contacted ACTA's board. I happened to serve on that board. I told you to. And we, you and I talked about it. And ACTA's board, I, in, our, in our following bo subsequent board meeting, we discussed the option of ACTA providing that service. Our director, inform the board that, that what he was going to need was going to be more time with schedules they had than we they could get back to us today and so that's why I requested they not be on the agenda for tonight so they were planning to bring some recommendations to the board about what ACTA may or may not be able to do to try and transport veterans themselves which could take some of the pressure off veteran services uh, that's kind of where we are right now. We're just waiting to find out what they can do to try and help solve the problem. And I think gaining some insight into what those numbers look like, I would, I would hope that uh, Peter Murphy has had conversations with uh, Tammy and has had a chance to 
figure out some of the numbers and um, that we can move forward. Am I allowed to speak? No. Okay, not. Because I, I want to. <laughs> Thank you. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, Thank I you. think we'll, we'll get an answer. We just got to go through the process of getting to the answer. I was one that made the motion that was passed with a four to one vote for the budget. Part of that motion was to get a van from the sheriff, which he has now, I understand, has complied with, uh, and has been provided to Veteran Services. Uh, that was part of my budget motion. Uh, secondly, um, the fifth member for Veteran Services was contingent upon them provi providing transportation for veterans. That was part of the motion with the passage of the budget. Um, I don't think there was any question or, or comment at that point that was negative other than the one vote that voted against the, the entire budget. Um, and that individual, and you, can, you will correct me if I'm wrong, you said you voted against it because you didn't want the tax reduction. I didn't want the tax reduction. I didn't want Okay, this. wait a minute. You'll okay. get well, another shot. Well, you're speaking for me. Now, the budget was pretty clear, I thought. Uh, ACTA is a nonprofit. Um, we, the county, do give them some money. Uh, that's clear. Most, mostly their own grants uh, that are state or federal and other grants. Uh, that's what they survive on. I was on that board for years as well. Um, I think it's wonderful if ACTA can provide and work with veteran services. I'm all for that. I'm all for. Um, Alco Vets, also Alamance County Veterans, which is an LLC, a nonprofit again. Uh, I know because I've seen their bylaws and their charter, none of those folks get paid a single penny. There is no salary for a single me member of Alco Vets. They do it solely out of the kindness of their heart uh, and their own time and their own work schedules. So if they're otherwise would be working, they're losing money out of their own pockets. And I have talked to them uh, many times about providing transportation to veterans, and they like doing that. Um, but I think it, that fifth position for, Al for veteran services was intended, and my motion, in fact, was to have that fifth person prepare veterans for transportation. That was part of the deal in the budget, uh, and if that means Working with ACTA, that's part of it. If it means working with Alcovets, that's part of it. If it means working with any other veteran services, that's part of it. But if they cannot do that and the other agencies, nonprofits are unable to do it, then my opinion is that budget was passed to have veteran services provide that transportation. And I think that's pretty clear. Um, and Ms. Crawford, I really appreciate what you do. Um, but I think that fifth person has some obligations that were spelled out in our budget. Thank you. Ms. Thompson? Okay. Um, the, the whole point of this, I'm not going to dance around anymore. The point of this was um, when I brought up about getting this position at the VSO to put another officer because of just the load they carry, um, I, in, in the budget, four to one, I did not support the tax reduction. I know how much mine is, $15.71. And I did not support sticking this on them because that's not what they do. And I also did not support the fact that um, we overlooked parks and recs again for some of the things that they need to do out in the rural community, my opinion only. But what, what got me about this, I'm just going to be real honest, is this decision to add this transportation to this position was done by you because I didn't know about it and maybe the other three knew about it because I didn't and it's been put in place for this to be it wasn't discussed out in an open meeting for us to vote on to see if that's now wait a minute I'm talking about the actual position to add transportation and and that concerns me because I'm on the DSS board and I, 
trust me, I worked with sexual abuse and domestic violence for years. And, but on the board, I don't have a right to say, okay, I'm board of commissioners and this is what I want because this is how I feel personally. If you arrest somebody for hurting a child or if you arrest somebody for hurting a senior or and if you know they've done it, you caught them in the act, I just want you to drive them on the other <coughs> side of town and throw them off cliff. That's what that position needs to be. I want you just to eliminate that problem. And I don't need to discuss it with anybody else because I'm on the board and that's the way I want it. And I don't have any power. I have 20% and, and that's all I need to have because five of us were elected. So we would all be different, like-minded or different-minded, but we would all compromise and work together because Bill's strength is my weakness, my strength is his weakness. That's how you get really good stuff out of stuff. You pull the best out of everything. And it just concerns me how this was decided, calling ahead and getting a van committed before, I only speak for myself, I even knew that transportation was gonna be a possible part of this. I don't think we as commissioners should take it upon ourselves to create positions that we want. We are not human resources. We are an elected body and we vote. And if we lose the vote, we lose. If we win the vote, we win. You know, um, that, that's just me. That's just how I feel. I, I think everything should be in the open except for personnel that's in that closed meeting right there because that's by law. But when we're talking about changing the very bones of an agency to one position, because I think it should be this way. I don't have a right to think it should be this way. I can think it, so to speak, but I can't make it that way. And I feel like this was made, and I didn't know anything about it. And I don't know if y'all talk, because I'm not going to say anything about that. We all talk to each other when something's needed. John calls me whenever he's got something to run by me that may come up, but I never heard about this. And that's why, you know, when I was asking you that night in the last meeting when we voted on the budget, whose idea was this? And, it, you know, when you get a van because a nonprofit, this very mission is supposed to, that's what they do, they're known for it, they're good for it, they make a difference in it. But yet you're helping a nonprofit because they're struggling with getting volunteers like who it nowadays. Um, once again, we're doing what we say that we don't think we should do. And I mean, that may be really petty, but it's about the principle of it. And um, that's all. If, it, if, it, if I'm the only one, which seems to be a lot, that's okay. I can accept it. But I just, I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody put in a dangerous situation that doesn't have cameras on a van, that may not be equipped for something like that, for some disability. I want everybody to be safe because they're going to have to have gas, they're going to have to have insurance. And um, that's going to be a liability on that particular agency, which is the county. And ACTA does transportation. They are the definition of it, and they are excellent. We're very fortunate to have them. Mr. Murphy's done a fine job. So I, I'm just beating a dead horse, and I know it. But that's it. <coughs> Mr. Lashley, anything else? Well, like I'll just go back and say what I said before, Ms. Thompson. Um, um, BSO wanted a full-time position. I heard people come in front of us and say that they needed transportation. Uh, I didn't design this position to for transportation. I designed this position to get the work done. And if the work is the, if the work is to transport somebody, they not only they have actually once again we're going to talk options. They have several options to get that done. But not not only do they have a van that they can drive somebody, but they have actor that they can use. There's a lot of options, so I like that. I, that and I just, and that extra person, you know, that extra person may not be able to spend, maybe some weeks you can spend 40 hours in the, in the office, but maybe there's that one week in which you're on the road three days. And I understand what you're saying about the uh, transportation cost and insurance and stuff like that, but I just thought that extra position was needed. And if it's, uh, it, if it's needed to transport or is needed to work in the office or other things, I just think, you know, once again, Let's get the job done. I agree. I get the job done. Uh, but I do want to make, you, you did say something about, that I'm very proud of in our last budget. We increased salaries $5.2 million. I spoke to a lot of folks at Parks and Recreation. 
folks are actually out there in the field doing work, and I asked them, is this going to help you? And not one person said no. And I told them that not only did we do that for them, we gave them $50,000 for a new vehicle. Am I right? Okay. Well, just want, don't want, I'm not going to stop there. But at least that's a start. And I'm very proud of that increase because not only did that increase come to fruition, but it came to fruition because the taxpayers of Alamance County provided for it. I agree. And I, I think we should be proud of that. Just I reiterate, I'd be very interested in staff's recommendations on the, the risks and benefits of, of this proposal or of this position. Mr. Connor. Same thing. I just want like I said before, I felt like we were doing a bit, providing a benefit to veteran services. If we didn't, I'm sorry, that wasn't our intent. And uh, um, I'm waiting to see what staff recommends to solve the problem if there is one. My final comment, hopefully, is uh, that we clearly did discuss veteran services and transportation that was discussed at length during the budget motion itself and afterwards, uh, and it was a four to one vote. Uh, I thought this was a done deal, four to one voting for that budget, um, and that was a large part of that budget. I hope that's over. Anything else, county commissioners? Thank you. All right, now, county attorney's report. Is there another? I have nothing to report. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. An hour Thank and you. seven minutes. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.